Hey, what's up, my magento loving friends? Let's talk about another practice test question. But before we do, I, I hope you take a moment to appreciate the date on the slides here. 2-2 two, two of 22. I guess you might say I'm slightly crazy about numbers. And when everything aligns, it feels like I won the jackpot or something. Uh, but, well, actually, you know what? Most people did get the practice test question right. So I don't know if it has anything to do with a lucky number when it comes to the dates. All kidding aside, let's talk about this practice test question. So you're asked to implement this CLI command, which must report whether or not it executed successfully. How do you do this? Now, to be really honest, this was more on the professional level, developer level, uh, and there's a couple of answers that we provided here. So let's take this opportunity to dig in and see exactly how the CLI works, more or less how to build a CLI command. I, I always like to zoom out, look at the big picture, make sure we have a good understanding of everything. And to be really frank, um, I didn't really notice this as a even a question until fairly recently. And the reason for this is, uh, well, the reason that made me see this is I started seeing an error in the logs, and that made me start doing some more troubleshooting, and I figured out that we actually are supposed to be adding a little bit more information to this. That said, it works fine without this information, this return code, but it is helpful to have that, especially if you are looking to put this command into a set of automated processes. Uh, so for example, so let's talk about return codes here. Um, typically speaking, when we run a command on this in the CLI in bash or we SSH in, we typically look for an error. Like, okay, here's a, here's an error string, and okay, what are we going to do with that? Are we going to run it, fix it, whatever we're going to do there. But in the case of building a for example, an if statement. So if this command runs successfully, then we're going to do this sort of thing. And if it doesn't run successfully, then we're going to do something else. It's possible, but it's a little bit harder in Bash to try to filter output and to see if stuff matches. And again, it's possible, but depending on how many different error message and codes come out, like it, it's little it's more difficult so if we were can return a true or false like this returned successfully or here is the error code that it did not return successfully as a result we are giving we are making automation of this process a little bit easier so let's take a look at this example so I ran this code uh, and I forgot to pull that over here uh, I ran this code of this I ran bin magento of swift auto gift card import and then I put the uh, the here is the, the file equals, and I pass the file in there. And just one thing to note, for those of you that have purchased the Art of E-Commerce debugging course, you get this access to this project. I'm continuously updating it. I tweaked it today, to be really honest, and I, I found that I had missed uh, adding these return codes in here. And I added them in, and I created a CSV file to be able to demonstrate how this all works. So, again, you get the latest information. You get the latest code, example code debugging code it's all right there of course with all the other great examples as far as how to learn how to quickly approach and debug problems so back to our example here um all right so we basically we have to set the state code etc oh and i forgot one uh location here so we're going to step through this um real quickly and one thing i want to also point out here is using the magento csv uh parser is not necessarily the fastest or the most efficient way to do this. If you use, um, you can use fgets CSV, which is incredibly um, rudimentary, uh, low level, and then use that with a generator, and you can create basically a for each loop. And in fact, I'll probably do a video here later as far as how to actually do that to make it a ridiculously efficient uh, CSV parsing engine where you can parse probably gigabytes a, a, a GIF file that's over a gigabyte or more. I mean, just massive files just because it's one row at a time, and that's how it processes that. So we'll, we'll be talking a little bit more um, about that. So basically, so we have our uh, CSV data. Again, not very efficient, but it is what Magento offers us. But I always have to say this. Just because Magento offers us something does not mean that's the best way to go. There's often better ways. So it's up to us to say, do we go standard route or do we go performance or better route? And the cost, the trade-off usually is understandability. Okay, if we go this new route, are, or is, are we in six months going to be, be able to understand and agree with this decision or whatever other developer is coming into this project? So that's kind of the big trade-off there. 
All right, so we get our rows here, and it's pretty simple to see exactly how this works. Our rows, we see the two rows here. Um, and just going to go through and save those. And we uh, write the uh, write data imported successfully. And then, so here, here is the difference here. And the way I found this is in a very interesting way. So I was starting to see an error. And I'm, let's just jump forward here. I started to see this error pop up in my, uh, when I had, we had uh, notice uh, level logging enabled. I started seeing that pop up. And I was like, okay, what's going on here? What's causing this problem? Well, it turns out it's because we were not returning a return code. In fact, if you will, if you notice, I was actually returning, uh, well, actually, you'll see right here. Kind of silly, actually. I was returning output right line, which I don't know if this even, uh, that returns void. So, yeah, there's definitely nothing being returned there. It's basically returning null or void. Returning, not it's not even returning null. So, um, yeah, so that as a result, <laughs> it, this was not necessarily very helpful. So, what I did to track this down was I pick a command uh, app config import all right and config import command that looks like this would be fairly reasonable and I'm actually going on a limb on this one just because yeah oh well there we go all right so then I I took a command it's so like a, how does magento build this out and I see uh, we have our execute and we turns ret uh, CLI return failure and return success. That's literally how to do it, how we, I did it. You know, you can read dev docs, great. You can read whatever blogs, articles you want out there, great, that's fine. But there's nothing like seeing how Magento build this, built this to give you a good foundation. Is there better ways often than yet that? Yes, but unfortunately I don't, I see a lot of code that doesn't even live up to Magento standards, let alone exceeding Magento standards. So my suggestion here is pay attention to the core code, see how that works. As a result, let's uh, jump back in here. And we see that our status code is an integer, which is good. And we're going to return this, et cetera, et cetera. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to work, work well. So as a result, that is the answer to this question using the CLI uh, class. And then the, oh, I just forgot what, what the name of that was. Uh, we have return failure, return success. And ultimately, uh, you can return any exit code you want. So. Uh, I mean, one usually indicates a failure, but there's a whole plethora of, you can return any integer you want if you want to, again, do a little bit more specific error checking handling to see exactly what type of error was returned, not just that it was successful or failed. So there's your practice test question for the week. If you haven't already, on Friday, we are going to be having our certification challenge. Same kind of encouragement, motivation challenge that we're doing right here, right now. Hope you join it. Go to YouTube and you'll see our live stream there.